views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Welcome to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to TransformationRadio.fm. You know, Maresha Donna Ducharme joining me here today. We're going to be talking about the way home to love. The way home to love. Um, you know, Maresha is joining me. She's going to share her insight, her wisdom, her spiritual teachings. Because you know what? We were talking about this in the previous hour, and Linda is on a roll here with this lineup. We are living in times that people ask me, they ask me this, Benny. They say, you know, is listen, Pat, we've heard you talk about what it was like growing up in the 60s and the 70s. You know, is this time more turbulent than that? I, my answer is, I think I'm just older now. I think I'm just older. I think I've just seen it. I think I've been through it. I think I've done the marches. I still do them, you know, but I have a new way of approaching um, the challenges that we face in the world. I've learned a few things. I did not have Maresha to help me when I was younger. Didn't have it. Didn't know that I could have it. But, you know, that's why I do street smart spirituality, and I don't talk about the way home to love. I'll leave that up to some other experts like Marisha joining me here today. You know, she is the founder and resident teacher of Snow Dragon Sanctuary, but you're going to hear about that. You know, she has been out in the world. She's absolutely committed to helping each of us realize peace, health, well-being, all of the above. Why? Because it's our birthright. Why? Because we know we can. You know, whether it is connecting with people online or whether it is connecting with people energy to energy, soul to soul. You know, Marisha is somebody joining me here today, the author of this book, and somebody that is out in the world saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. There is an essence of life. We can trust love, but how do we, how do we find peace in turbulent times? Marisha, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. Well, thank you. It's great to be with you. I want to ask you this question before we talk more about you, before we talk more about your, you know, what you've done, the work you're doing in the world, the way home to love. I want to ask you this question I've been asking for 14 years. I've just done a very brief introduction of you. It's hard sometimes to get the essence of who a person is. But given all that you are and all that you do in the world, what are some of the challenges? What are some of the obstacles that you personally have had to overcome to bring you to this very moment? Well, I'm I'm just like everybody else. Uh, you know, my life has had... Uh, you know, wonderful, wonderful times, and I've been challenged by many things in life. Uh, as I said, I'm just like everybody else. Um, you know, I've been challenged by divorce and, uh, you know, loss of a loved one and various things at various times. And then there are the smaller challenges that go on internally inside each one of us every day. Uh, you know, whether it is to stay positive and keep our light on in a difficult and chaotic time or whether we're worried about how we're going to pay the mortgage. 
So uh, just like everybody else, uh, normal normal challenges, and sometimes they're uh, they're more difficult. You know, sometimes they're bigger life transitions, and sometimes they're they're just day to day challenges that we have to face. Yeah, I, I love looking at a couple of things you say. There's one interesting question I read about what you're bringing to the table. Um, one of them was, you know, uh, what would happen if Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, Muhammad, Divine Mother all met in conversation? What would they think of each other? What would they think of each other's spiritual perspective, spiritual point of views? And I remember reading that somewhere. And then my understanding is, You've been exploring that question oh, pretty much most of your life, haven't you? Yes, yes, I really have. I have uh, uh, a very diverse background, you know, in spiritual and theological experience and study. And, you know, really what's at the heart of it all it has been my, my lifelong pursuit. And what I've found is it's really very simple that what is at the heart of it all is uh, love. You know, the different spiritual traditions, if you take away the doctrine and the dogma, uh, the the teachings and the essence are very, very similar. And, you know, it's the same with people. Uh, People in life, when you go through all the processes of whatever the challenges are, at the bottom of it all, people really have a desire to love and to be loved. Um, But there's conflict. You know, there's conflict in the world, and so, and there's conflict within each soul. So then, so then it becomes, you know, how, how do we remove the conflict? But as far as the different spiritual traditions go, um, they're really very, very much the same uh, in, their, in their essence, in their essential teaching. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a couple of friends that were talking to me, and I shared a little bit of this in the introduction about talking to me about what did I think about the time we're living in right now? you know, versus the days marching down in the South or marching, you you know, for something or all of the above, you know, peace signs, love, all of that. What did I think about today's world? And did I think today's more turbulent than it was then? And in my mind, I thought about this two ways, and I would love to hear uh, you share your thoughts on this. First of all, many people while some coverage was had on television back then, wasn't quite like now. I mean, if you hiccup, a thousand people know about it. Um, right. it. It's a different time. Do you think that that helps us better bring more peace? Or does the level of connection we have available to us bring us farther apart? Well, I think it's both. I think there's a, a positive and a negative. You know, uh-huh. every front every front has a back. I think there are some really positive ways in which people can connect now and get information, but it also has a, a side where it maybe it's a bit superficial and there's not the heart-to-heart so much as there used to be between human beings. So I, I think it's both. And the other thing that I think is, I think that we've always had war and, and you know, politics is always uh, politics. But one of the things that we're all facing now uh, is the collective consequences of how we've been all living upon the earth and all of the changes that we're facing now in, in the climate. And so that, that's really, you know, we've been building up to these points, you know, for a very, very long time. But now we're really living in the times of consequence. So I I think that is something that is uh, kind of a new challenge that we're facing, that humanity is facing. Yeah, it it is a new challenge for us because also um, we know about it, right? We know about that. Um, Mm -hmm. I I wanted to, to ask you, the essence of life, as you talk about it in your book, um, this essence, this natural way of being, you know, is it really our birthright? I, I have some folks I know that come on and they talk about the fact that some folks say this beauty, this peaceful nature we're born with. I have other people I've interviewed in 14 years that say, no, we come in the world angry and screaming and scared. And I wanted to ask <laughs> you, <laughs> it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Like, you know, you know that, right? 
Um, but the question well, I, I want to ask is it is it all of the above? Well, I think I have to answer it in the same way. I think it's both. I think yeah. that I think that we come into this life and we come in in various ways, you know, according to our our or our own soul's karma. Mm-hmm. And I think that for some, you know, some people come and uh, it's an easy transition and there's a more positive outlook. And and then I think for some it's difficult. And then there's a, everything in between. But but I think what is everyone's, every soul's birthright is to begin to understand uh, and even just open up to the idea that um, there are ways, there is a way for each soul to undergo, you know, healing and integration and union. And so, you know, that's really what what I'm all about, <laughs> is <laughs> helping people to realize that that, that that is something that they can have if they choose that. Mm -hmm. Well, you you know, when we come back from break, I want to talk with you about trust. And, you know, it's something that for me, um, I got to learn and study trust at a real academic and empirical level because I studied it for eight years. And then at a really emotional level, because anybody that would study trust for eight years must got some issues. Right. I mean, (laughs) right. Right. I mean, you know this. Right. But the question that I would like to talk to you with you about when we come back is this idea of trusting and trusting love. You know, you say in the book, the quest of the uh, spiritual pilgrim is endless. I love that. And yet sometimes we just want to see a beginning and an end. We're going to take a short break, everyone. Lots to talk about the way home to love copies of the book for you. We're going to be giving away today during the show. Taking your questions, 1-800-930-2819. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. For all the times that you ain't on my parade And all the clubs you get in using my name You think you broke my heart, oh girl, for goodness sake You think I'm crying on my own Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases, it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio and help keep our mission strong for the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease we are not going to let you down we're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio the message will continue the conversations will become stronger and the healing epic Are you looking for the perfect setting for your next workshop or retreat? At Spirit Fire Meditative Retreat Center, cultivating consciousness is what we do best. Our guests count on us to create an atmosphere that supports serenity and well-being. We lead from the heart and create space for the mind. Freshly prepared meals designed with local and organic ingredients, 95 acres of beautiful woods and pastures, and a facility built with green in mind. This is what you'll find at Spirit Fire. For more information, visit spiritfireretreatcenter.com. Hi there, my name is Audrey Michelle, host of Rewired Life Radio and a spiritual growth coach. I talk about this all the time on my show, listening to your body and acting on intuition. What do these things even mean? Here's the thing, about 10 years ago, I figured out I was doing it all wrong. I mean, I wasn't unhappy, but was I really happy? And then life sent me a spiritual smackdown, like it does, because I wasn't listening to my best resource, my body and my intuition. I was living from a place of fear. I was stressed and I was in pain, and I seemed to be happily unhappy. Mostly I just didn't know what I didn't know. And what I didn't know was that my body and my intuition had all the tools I needed to live life as my best self. I'm sharing the tools I have learned over the last 10 years of my healing journey in my online class, Soul Awakening, beginning September 19th. Learn more. Go to AudreyMichelle.com slash awaken. That's Audrey Michelle spelled M-I-C-H-E-L dot com slash awaken. 
Is traditional medicine not working for you? Do you still feel as if your health isn't 100%? Here at the Holistic Medical Center, Dr. Nushin Darvish and the qualified staff look through the dimensions of wellness and start a healing plan prioritized to your needs. Our physicians assess the whole you until complete health is achieved. Get the help you need by visiting drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. Wanna write a song Cause I didn't want anyone thinking I still care or don't But you still hit my phone up And baby I'll be moving on And I think it should be something I don't want to hold back Maybe you should know that Hey everybody, welcome back, welcome back. Yep, you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show. I'm Dr. Pat And uh, joining me here today, my very special guest Marisha Ducharme Marisha, listen, this book, The Way Home to Love, it's a powerful, powerful message for the day and times we live in. And it's a powerful message whether we're living in these times or not. But I want to ask you this question before we jump into trusting love. How important is your message, this book, for today's world? Today's world. Well, I, I mean, I think it's important for today's world um, because we are, you know, we just had a little conversation before the break about, yeah. you know, how we're all, all connected through social media. I, I think that because of the levels of superficiality that exist in our communications today, that some of the reflections in the book, um, well, we, we've, we've forgotten how to be self-reflective. You know, it's more like we have this, uh, sense of putting ourselves out there, you know, through all of the different ways that we can put ourselves out there. Um, but going inside uh, is something that we, I believe, are in deficit of. So I think it's, I think it's really, really important. I think that we have to be able to balance our inner awareness and self-reflective time with the time that we are out in the world and whether we're working or being social or the various ways that we are in the world. I think that health and integration comes when when we're balanced uh, with our inner awareness and then our outer action. Mm. You, you know, I, I, I want to get back to something I said before that, you know, we were talking about, you know, the pilgrim and the journey and, it's, and, and it being endless. Um, yet that doesn't mean that we don't see signs of progress, that we don't see signs of change that we don't see signs of, you, you know, getting more in touch, feeling more, living more. Um, and, and so the question comes up for me is, you know, in the discovery of ourselves in the context of the world, you know, what is it about our woundedness that comes to the forefront to be healed? What is it about our woundedness that comes to the, well, it's repetitive, <laughs> Um, our, our woundedness will keep resurfacing uh, over and over and over again because it's, a, it's our karma. I, I, I feel like our, our basic wound, if you will, is our, our karmic uh, cycle. And it repeats itself over and over again. And I think anybody who is probably past the age of 25 going on 30 and up will already have enough experiences in life where you can see that, oh, my gosh, here I am again. I'm in the yeah. same place. Or, geez, why do I always end up feeling left out? Or, you know, so on and so forth. And when that starts to happen, people often begin to ask a question, ask the inner question, like, why does this happen? You know, what can I do? How can I find relief? And so so I think that, you know, the, the woundedness is, is, is a very important signal and sign that can teach us um, how to progress. And I think that the progressions are, it's you know, it's kind of like uh, opening a flower. A flower doesn't open all at once. So, you know, we get to have a continuum of growth and transformation. And it happens, it happens to us all lifelong. It's a continuum. Um, you know, this this book that you've written and the timing of it, you know, people 
sometimes don't remember that we start writing these books years, years, years in advance of when they actually reach the public. Um, and I, I'm just curious, you know, how does this book reflect, you know, the message that you're bringing forth, um, you know, for the world and to help us come to this place and realization that we can choose peace. We can trust love. Mm -hmm. Well, this, this book was really uh, the, the outcome of, you know, many years of uh, teaching and practice. Uh, it came about uh, by one of the uh, students who was coming to the sanctuary wanted to uh, tape the discourses because she wanted to be able to listen to them later. And then she wanted to be able to um, transcribe them so that she could have a, a file that she could, you know, refer, refer to. And then one day she said, you know, this is, this is a, I think these, these discourses could help people. So let's, let's, let's do a book. And, you know, I've had, I've had, I have many books in me. Um, this was, was one of them. And I think that, you know, the book has a life of its own. And I think it came together uh, at exactly the right time. Um, and I think now, more than ever, uh, you know, we really need to remember that, that there is love and that we can trust love. And when I'm talking about love, I'm, I'm not talking about romantic love. I'm talking about love, which is, you know, the essence uh, that brought us here. You know, it's the essence of life, and it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the longing that we all have inside of us. And sometimes we experience it as a whole, H-O-L-E, <laughs> something that is empty that we keep trying to fill up. But when we begin to practice uh, through spiritual practices, we begin to uh, we begin to transform and understand that we we are the way. <laughs> each soul yeah. is the way, and each of us has we we already hold the key, uh, but. We must do the work. We we must you know do the practice in order to um, to realize and to find what's already there. It's, it's ironic. It's it's a paradox. It's already there. Mm. You know, I and remember reading your. I remember reading the book, and I remember thinking two things in particular about what you just said now. And one is something my my mom used to say to all of us kids. You know, she would say something like, you know, uh, heaven is here on earth. I mean, she would say that, and it's within you. Later on, I found yeah. out that, you know, if you want to go uh, look in the Bible or look in scriptures and look in some of the writings, it is really translated in the kingdom of heaven is within. And boy, if we could just remember that one thing, but we have a forgetter. <laughs> we have a little forgetter, don't we? Because, yes, uh, you know, this this thing is one of the hardest things to remember. Well, I think what happens is each of us, part of us is unconscious. And then, and then as we go through life, we become, you know, more and more conscious. I mean, we can all remember being really, really little. Some people can remember, you know, being very, very young. And other people say they don't remember anything before, you know, like the time they were maybe five or six. So it's, it's this evolution of consciousness. Um, and sometimes our unconsciousness wants to pull us back into forgetting. Mm -hmm. It pulls us back and we, we kind of like closing a blind and we go behind the blind. But the, the good part is that we can, we can open the blind and we can stay mm -hmm. in consciousness. Yeah, I, I think in the book, what you talk you uh, you talk about witness consciousness. You know, what is witness consciousness? And I was uh -huh. so fascinated by that because I thought, wow, how powerful is that term in itself? And I had not heard it before. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, witness consciousness is is part of ourselves, and it's it's really wonderful when we find it. See, this is one of the golden keys that, that I love about, um, you know, the spiritual transformative process. There are so many keys, and, and we already hold the keys. But like you just said, you know, you just came upon the term witness consciousness, and it spoke to you. And yeah. it's part of who we are. It's part of our own consciousness. 
and we can only access it um, by closing our two outer eyes. So our eyes open in the morning, we wake up, our eyes open, we are stimulated all day long by everything we're reading, everything we're seeing, and so there's, again, there's this outward, outward, outward energy that we're involved in. Well, in order to reach the witness consciousness, you have to close your two physical eyes, and so thereby you're already reducing your sensorial input, and you're just relaxing with the breath. You learn how to breathe a simple breath very, very consciously. And then as you learn how to go in and become relaxed and to close your eyes and to breathe, you'll be able to, over time, notice that you can actually watch yourself. You can actually reflect on what you are thinking, the nature of your thoughts. You'll be able to feel the nature of any emotion that is arising in you. Um, and the witness can, what, what, what we try to do in the witness is to be very, very neutral. The witness can watch all of that without engaging in any of the emotions or any of the thoughts. So the witness consciousness doesn't suppress anything. Anything can be arising internally, even though you're sitting there. And so it doesn't suppress anything, but it doesn't express anything either. It doesn't, you know, all of a sudden you don't open your eyes and stand up and start to talk of, like, gee, I have this problem. What you do is you make the commitment to stay seated with your eyes closed, stay aligned with the rhythm of the breath, and to just watch from the witness what arises. And it is, whatever it is, it arises. So the thought will go through the mind or the emotion will roll through the body like a wave. And the witness simply watches very, very neutrally. This process is alchemical. And as you sit in meditation and you engage the witness and you watch what's happening, it's actually starting to build a fire, if you will, <laughs> that is burning up the nature of the reaction that you're having either in your emotions or in your mind. Mm. So, paradoxically, you're sitting, and it looks like you're not doing anything, but internally it's extremely active and transformative. Yeah, is that really, you know, when we think about that, and we see this all the time, we see the process of transmutation, but we don't recognize it or we don't call it. We just take it sort of for granted. You know, every time we burn a piece of wood and it turns into smoke, right? You know, yeah. every time we take water and put it in an ice cube uh, thing and put it in the freezer, um, right. you know, we're constantly in the process of transmutation. And yet when it comes to us, it is very, very like, oh, that thing. We're going to take a short break. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to talk about what is it in this day to day that we live in? What is the realizations that we can have? How do we touch upon them? And what is it about our minds now? It used to be the heart was getting first class billing. Now it's the mind. What is it about the mind that literally has you more mindful and less in a state of madness. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Let's have some fun. This beat is sick. I want to take a ride on your disco stick. Let's have some fun. This beat is sick. I want to take a ride on your disco stick. Known for his keen sense of humor, contagious smile, and extensive esoteric wisdom, EJ translates deep spiritual wisdom into practical advice to empower you to live your happiest, most fulfilled experience. Mystic Living Radio, deep spiritual wisdom, practical advice with EJ, Eliyahu Jihan. This hit show delivers profound experiences for all who want to live life to their deepest desires. Tune in monthly for Mystic Living Radio. Learn more by visiting vitaltransformation.org. 
Did you know why they call the foundation the foundation? It's called the foundation because it completely eliminates your foundation for what you thought your reality was and creates a whole new space where you can have an entirely new reality that is foundationless. So from my point of view, they should call it the unfoundation or the foundationlessness. Either way, there's a big new global rewrite happening again because these guys cannot stop changing. There should be like a change anonymous that Gary and Dane go to. And it's happening April 28th to May 1st. You can find out about it at accessconsciousness.com forward slash global foundation. It's happening in Paris. Go to Paris or do it online or find a pod near you. These are all the options you have. And what else is possible? Are you feeling stagnant or blocked in your love life, career, health, or finances? Experiencing difficulty focusing or setting and achieving goals? Tune in to Spiritual Diagnostics Radio with psychic visionary healers Carol Dorian and Justice Welling. Discover the cause and effect of unwanted patterns in life. Tune in every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit SpiritualDeed.com. Do you know how to achieve wellness in all areas of your life? Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. Signs of wellness are a capacity to love and ability to nurture, a sense of purpose, a good sense of humor and plenty of fun in your life, a concern for others and a respect for the environment, a conscious commitment to personal excellence, a sense of balance and integrated lifestyle, and capacity to cope with whatever life presents. Well, people enjoy their lives and want them to last as long as possible. That's why the wellness mindset usually accompanies other constructive healthy lifestyle habits. By adopting a wellness mindset and behaviors like eating well, taking the right nutrition for the body, exercising, and saying affirmations are just a few things to structure a healthy system of values and beliefs. Call us at 888-777-4232. That's 888-777-4232. And visit us at maryjanemack.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Pat. I'm Marisha Ducharme. And Marisha is joining me here today, the author of The Way Home to Love. And by the way, we're going to give a copy of the book away right now. 1-800-930-2819. Marisha, before we do that, um, how can people find out more about you? And how can get, they get their copy of the book? So we have two websites. The first one is www.no dragon sanctuary.com and if you go to snow dragon sanctuary.com you can uh click on the links uh to amazon.com and to balboa press and you can get copies there you can also go to marisha ducharme books.com m-a-r-e-s-h-a-d-u-c-h-a-r-m-e books.com and they can also be ordered directly from that website as well. Mm. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining me here today. Um, I wanted to talk about, you heard me before the break talk about the mind. And, you know, at some point, I think in the evolution of things here and our own evolution of awareness, you know, we talked about the heart a lot. We talked about the heart a lot. Um And we didn't really talk about the mind very much. You know, people that we consider spiritual people, spiritual people, they talked about this. But now we've learned a lot. We've learned so much uh, from, from science. We've learned so much from spiritual practices that the mind is not a second class citizen as it was once thought to be. But yet, I don't think we understand uh, our own minds, how to maybe not be reactive, you know, how to look at the emotions and have our emotional responses. Uh, We also carry thousands and thousands of thoughts that don't necessarily get us from to where we are to where we want to go. 
And I know you talk about this here. So I want to ask you one, um, what have we learned about the mind and the mind being an advocate and not an enemy for us on this journey? I think that um, I think we have to understand that the nature of the mind is a bit unruly, and that it, it, it's not it's not unlike a, a, an undisciplined child. <laughs> if a child is undisciplined, then we give the child healthy boundaries uh, in which to function, so that the child can be more calm and peaceful and successful. And it's the same thing with our minds. Our minds can either, you know, run roughshod over us, you know, through through worry and all sorts of uh, ways in which it thinks. You know, sometimes people are are always looking outside of themselves for validation or seeking control over events or wanting to, you know, grab and, and hold. And these repetitive behaviors cause pain and suffering. And mm. so then we can train ourselves uh, through very simple but very profound practices and teach uh, the mind, our, our mind, um, how to be quiet, how to settle down. And and we can do it. It, it can happen very, very simply through through trained practice. Mm-hmm. Um, in the process of day-to-day life, we have many, many choices uh, that are either going to get us to the pathway to freedom or will imprison us in our living and our lives. Um, You know, the way home to love is a a powerful, powerful message to bring to the world. Uh, And and you say that it's a guide to peace in turbulent times. Um, I was sure during, during the last hour, I was asked if I thought these times that I'm living in now were more turbulent than when I was in my 20s and 30s. And my answer was, not really. I mean, anybody that has gone through those years, you know, there is a sense of everything was a struggle. You you know, I mean, the idea of even having people of color in your workplace was like a foreign idea. And so so my answer was short and to the point. It was, no, I don't think so. However, we were not bombarded with the minutia of detail and the level of sophistication of what's going on in the world that in, in, in the way we have now. Mm-hmm. They're both eras of turbulent times. It's really clear. And one would say, how do we, or ask, how do we find peace? You know, do we put our heads in the sand or do we find another way? And I'd love to ask you, um, how do we find that other way? Well, we have to, um, there is a way. <laughs> and as I said before, each one of us is the way. Um, we have to understand that we, we're habitual, we have a habitual unconscious nature. And that we're trying to transform it to not be habitual. We're trying to break the repetitive behavior patterns. They cause pain and suffering. And the only way that we can break them, uh, which is another, another way to say, the only way that we can transform our karma is through uh, the meditative process. One has to be able to meditate. The, the meditation is what creates the alchemical, transformational energy within our own bodies as we're going through the process of meditation. And that's, that's what is important. That's the only way we can create uh, a new behavior and to break a repetitive behavior. Because otherwise, if we don't sit and experience to the fullest what it is we're feeling and how it is we think about things, then we stay unconscious and we keep repeating the same cycle over and over and over again. And I also want to say that um, these repetitive patterns are not just um, in each individual soul. We also have a collective karma uh, as a collective society. And so we see societal patterns. You know, we see the repetition of war. We see the repetition of fighting. You know, we see a lot of repetition there. So 
As each person enters into the transformational process, it affects the whole. It absolutely helps. I think that even one person changing inside and learning how to transform a negative habitual pattern, stop fighting with oneself, stop fighting with others, can begin to bring that positive energy uh, to the outer world, to the collective. Mm. You know, I want to do this. Why don't we give a copy of the book away? 1-800-930-2819. 1-800-930-2819. How do we block ourselves? Let me ask that question. How do we block ourselves? And the reason I say that is because sometimes we may decide I'm going to watch television all weekend or I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. And those are the obvious ways that we cut ourselves off, right? But I, I, I don't know that we've learned very much about suffering. And, you know, there's that expression, right, uh, that is, uh, you know, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I remember hearing that like decades ago, but I think now I get a sense of it. Um, Is pain inevitable? (laughs) See, I don't even want to deal with pain. (laughs) I I think that the pain, I think that the pain is the great transformer. I I feel that when we start to accept our unconsciousness and we're ready to be open we're ready to be brave and really face ourselves, that that's when everything begins for us. That that is how we can begin to release the pain. But but again, you can only release the pain by being willing to be facing the pain. Mm. So a lot of times what happens is people are suffering and in pain for various reasons. Maybe somebody's going through a divorce or they're getting fired or you know, for whatever reason, um, they have to be willing to stop and self-reflect on the circumstances that they participated in to create the pain. Uh, I think a lot of times the way we think about things is that things happen to us, that she did this to me or he did that to me, or if it weren't for that situation, I'd be better off. But the truth is, is that it happens from the inside out. It's more of a reflection of how we think about things than about some random universe acting upon us. Mm. And so then the power starts to shift because we begin to realize that we are the way. And we can begin, if we are the way, we can begin to change our uh, words. We can begin to change our deeds and our actions. And then new energy comes in. Oh. And it's like a surprise. It's, it's like a breath of fresh air. Oh, you know, one of the things that I, I love that we're talking about is looking and talking about this as a breath of fresh air, because number one, first and foremost, I think we're holding our, bra- uh, our, our breath. I think we wait to exhale. And sometimes we think it's safe to exhale and other times we think it's not. Um, so, you know, when things happen to us and many of us have heard the expre- expression, you know, sometimes, you know, why do bad things happen to good people? I mean, we've all heard that, like, you know, someone's better than the other person. But the point is things do happen to us. And you just talked about how these become lessons, how they become, you know, portals for our growth. Um, how much of this is happening in real time in the day and day we live in and how much of it may be, may be attributed to karma. And then what can we do about that? Well, I think it's all an interplay of, of karma. Um, I, I think it's it's our karmic, our karmic, um, uh, let's see what's the word I'm looking for. The sum total of our karma is always working upon us. Mm -hmm. And so when we start to really take that in and think about that, then the way that we respond to things, we can start to respond to things differently. Instead of reacting Mm -hmm. to things habitually, we can begin to respond 
to things instead, which is a much more balanced, integrated way of dealing with the suffering and the challenges. And then life starts to lighten up. Um, we realize that we have uh, this inner power to help ourselves. And it's very, very powerful. It's a very powerful realization. And one of my teachers had a, a wonderful thing that he says, and he says, that which I am searching for is me. That which acts as an enemy is me. And that which is attempting to get rid of the self-destructive me is also me. I am the obstruction, and I am the way. Mm. And so that's, that's very powerful, because then as we, that is. As, we, as we spiritually mature, we can face ourselves and say, oh, so I create some of my own obstructions in the world. Gee, how do I do that? And when we start to be willing to look at that, then we can begin to dissolve very easily those obstacles. Mm. You know, we've talked about so much today, and certainly in your book and in your life and in your journey, you know, we're talking about how to create this change from the inside out, really. And, you know, yes. we spend so much of our time being uh, completely absorbed in the outer world. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Am I buying the right toothpaste? No, wait a minute. No, I don't. You know, I didn't buy the right car. Oh, but wait, I should eat meat and I should not eat meat. And it's so funny we're talking about this that, you know, I was talking to someone the other day who has been telling me that she can't she can't drink milk. She was told, yeah, I can't drink milk. I've stopped drinking milk. I've stopped drinking milk. Right. And all of a sudden, you, you know, we're, we're out and, and all of a sudden she pulls out a snack. So she pulls out a piece of cheese, string cheese. And I just looked at her. And I said, oh, I thought you're not supposed to uh, eat that. She says, oh, no, I'm only not I'm only supposed to not drink milk. And my mind <laughs> felt like <laughs> <Marisha>. <laughs> my mind was like, I think that that was the greatest moment I think I've had in a really long time. You know, it's one of those moments when you hear that you could say to yourself, well, wait a minute. Do you want to tell her that string cheese has milk in it? And I just smiled and I looked at her and I said, oh, my gosh, that's great news. <laughs> so, you know, that's, you're, you're, actually, you're actually talking about one of the keys, which is that you just simply observed and you stayed neutral and you didn't go into reaction. And you just responded in a very simple way and... Um, it's very simple and open there. Very nice. It is. And that's why I brought it up, because you have some keys which you share in the book. And they really are, in a lot of ways, simple. And I want yeah. to ask you, we got a couple minutes left. Can you give us some more hints? Because, you know, you got to remember, I read all these books, so some of this does wear off. But, you know, I could feel myself fighting off my ego in that moment to almost like, okay, let's read the label together. And I thought, no, not really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the simplest, the simplest uh, key that I can offer everyone, uh, and this is going to sound maybe a little funny, but it is to breathe. There is a big yeah. difference between breathing unconsciously, which we all do all day long and all night long, we don't think about it. We're just breathing. But when we breathe consciously, it's very, very different. It changes our chemistry. And our chemistry changes our consciousness. So if I'm standing in the line at the grocery store and there's a long line and the cashier is going really slow and then she's talking to the person bagging and I'm feeling feelings of aggravation coming up, Something very, very profound that I can do instead of make myself stressed is to consciously breathe in and to consciously breathe out. Mm. And when we, when we do that, even for 30 seconds, we calm our physiological, biological system down. We slow everything down. We don't react habitually. 
and we're just for a, a minute or so, we're, we're simply breathing. Mm-hmm. And it changes everything. It's really the first step that we all must take uh, to inner transformation is to breathe consciously. Mm. You know, if we don't, it goes back to what I said before. We wait to exhale. We're wound up, uh, my, you know, tighter than a top. And we walk around and then we wonder why we reach a tipping port, uh, part in our day and we flow over with whatever that emotion is. And sometimes I think what we might do is we lash out at the people that we're closest to. In your work, you're helping us realize we don't have to do that, though. Isn't that really right. what you know we're trying to say here is, and I said it during the last show, don't hit that enter button. Don't send that mm-hmm. Facebook post. You know, don't shoot that email. Don't tweet that. Do something different. Can you just Absolutely. share with us in a, a couple of minutes we have left, what can we do differently here? Well, one is to notice uh, that you want to do something that's reactive. And then when you notice that, so that's step one. When you notice that you want to do something reactive, you take step two, which is you breathe mm-hmm. so that you do not go into an automatic reaction. And then step three is just staying with the feeling that you're feeling. So if you're feeling angry, breathe. Keep breathing into the sensation. If you're having aggressive thoughts, keep breathing and and do not react. We're breathing instead of reacting. Mm. And then after that, of course, is is thinking about and being willing to uh, make a commitment to actually do a sitting meditation uh, for at least 20 minutes a day. Yeah. And then you can really begin to, to progress. Yeah. I mean, I love what you said. We have to make a commitment to change to begin with. Yes. Yeah. We have to make a commitment to change. I mean, you know, people always ask me, as I'm sure they've asked you, is what's the first step? And that's my first step for everything. It's not awareness. It's not awakening. It's a commitment that you make to take that, to take whatever it is that you're talking about, that I talk about, and commit to change. Otherwise, we're taking a lot of classes and we're running in place, aren't we? Yes, you know, spiritual practice and the will to practice have to go together. And uh-huh. that will to practice is your what you're talking about is you're you know, making the commitment. Knowing yeah. what to do but having no interest to do it will get you nowhere. <laughs> and mm-hmm. wanting to succeed and not knowing how is equally useless. So and we have to really yeah, we have to bring up that 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 uh, willingness to commit to ourselves to our own good health and well-being and and uh, in our own progress as a human being. Wow. Thank you so much for today. Again, give out your website. Tell people how they can get a copy of the book. And thank you so much for all that you're doing in the world to really help us each become a, a better person and contribute more. Thank you. Please tell us how we can find out more about you. Okay. So you can go to my website, which is no Dragon sanctuary.com and you can find out how to order the book right there just one one website's fine because they're both linked together so snow sanctuary.com one last question what is your personal message what would you like to leave us with today I, i would just really like everybody to know that each individual soul has everything that he or she needs we, we are born with it. It is our birthright. Uh, we already have it. We just have to open it up and use it. So it's, it's, it's very um, exciting to know that you have that power inside, no matter what your circumstances are. Wow. Thank you so much for today. Awesome show. Awesome book. Um, for those of you out there, if you've missed any part of this, this will play again. Uh, today on TransformationTalkRadio.com. 
Benny, thank you for pushing all the right buttons. And to you all listening, you are the best listeners on the planet. You're amazing. You help me get up every day with a smile on my face. Have a great day for all of you and let us rock on. We'll see you next time. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.